something I don't feel in my legs. <laughs> They're still there. They're still there. I don't know if I'm excited or, uh, or nervous, but uh, I was up until like one. Yeah. Um, because what I said, uh, I've been tossing around. Tina knows that. I said, sleep. I said, I'm excited. Uh, I'm nervous, actually. <laughs> Especially I have some uh, family here who I love. Mm -hmm. Surprised to actually. Uh, you know what? Uh, I, I really admire people who come up here. Actually, this is my first time. It's, it's a record. I mean, it's, it's, my, it's not on my bucket list, actually. It's, it's <laughs> but you know what? I accepted the challenge. And, uh, I never back down, I guess. So, uh, this is for the Lord, actually. And, uh, and I'm doing this. Uh, uh, like I said, I admire people. Like, they come up here with uh, the way they speak and the way they deliver the message. I think, Pastor, if I may, I say, uh, uh, he's been probably doing this 2,384. <laughs> And this is my first time, so <laughs> come to, uh, come to uh, think of it, it's, it's really a way, way off. But even Pastor Chuck here is here. I'm not going to mention him how many times it's in front of uh, you know, this pulpit. And we like talking to a uh, thousand people. Really, it's, it's, it's just a challenge. But thank the Lord for being here. Amen. And you guys, uh, I'm sure the Lord will... Uh, use me for, for this. Actually, I brought everything, all, all I have back home. In, the, in, 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 my, in my house, I brought all the vocabulary of English I, I, I know. So, uh, if in case I, uh, I slow down, or if I may say, uh, speaking a different language, that's not speaking in tongues, okay? Maybe I'm using, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking on my own, uh, my own uh, dialect language because I'm running out of, of English words. So this is my fourth day actually. It's not, uh, English is not, but uh, praise God again. Uh, the Lord will do something about this. <laughs> Amen. Um, let's have a word of prayer. Let's ask the Lord. Father God, thank you so much for this uh, beautiful day, beautiful Sunday, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being these people in this church, Lord. Thank you for, for we know you're going to make some miracles, Lord, in this, yes. in this church. May the uh, words of my mouth, Lord, and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight of that, our rock, our Lord, and our Redeemer. Amen. You know what, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, uh, do you know that life, life is a war? Do you agree with that? Uh, excuse me, can I get the mic there, please? I'm sorry, I, I'm supposed to use... As we see now in, in, in the world today, uh, there's so many wars going on, right? I mean, uh, if, if probably you're aware of it. In different countries, different, different parts of the world, there's wars, civil wars, invading territories, you know. To name a few, maybe, the, you know, I've been talking about the Russian and the Ukrainian and all this, you know, trying to fight each other because of territories. Even Libya or Syria, those are the, you know, the Middle Eastern countries or Europe or Middle East countries. Uh, we're aware of that. Uh, sometimes even religion involves, it causes lives, you know. 
aside from that war that we, we've been, you know, listening or we've been like reading in the news or reading or watching in the news, you know. Uh, there is killing, you know, terrorism, killing of innocent people. Uh, and sometimes, uh, although although we're not we're not actually you know directly connected to it or involved with it, but sometimes you know we feel that we are deeply affected with it, right? S especially uh, especially when we're on the same faith. Killing Christians, you know, like believers in the Lord. You know, those 21 Egyptians, I don't know if you remember them, they were beheaded. That's one of the terrible things that, you know, is happening in this world. But let, let, me, uh, let me give you something more, I think, more significant that we need to talk about. That I believe it's, 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 it's very special, especially in our walk. Uh, in relation to being a Christian, as Christians. I want to focus more on what I call the spiritual battle. I know, I know many of you, uh, well, all of us here may be countering that kind of battle every day in our lives. In fact, even the scripture said, even Jesus, in my opinion, taught us life, life is a war, it's a struggle. So uh, let us all stand up. Let, let's try uh, to read. I encourage you to, uh, to stand up if you're able. I would like to read uh, all together our verses for the day in respect to the Word of God. Found in Luke 13, verses 23 to 30. We could read it all together. Okay, uh, if you have your Bibles with you, I, I guess it's better to have your Bibles with you. Uh, are you guys ready? It's in Luke 13, verses 23 to 30. Ready? Then, then said unto one, unto one to him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. When once the master of the house is risen up and hath shut the, the door, and you begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us, and he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence you are. Then shall you begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in the presence, and thou hast taught in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence you are. Depart from me, all you work of iniquity. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, when you shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves trust them. And then they shall come from east, the east and from the west, and from the north and from the south, and shall sit down in the kingdom of God. And behold, there at last who shall be first, and the first shall be last. Let me take a seat. Thank you. If you notice the verse 24 there, uh, if you read again your text, verse 24 said, strive to enter through the narrow door. The word, the word strive there means, uh, in the Greek transliteration, it says, uh, agoniseste or agonisiste. So you can see the word there, agonize. The word agonize, agonisiste in the Greek translation. What does that mean? That means, uh, the word strive means to struggle, to wrestle, to make an effort, or to exert ourselves. So there's some actions there, right? But also, let's see what Jesus said, to, or, or find out in our own lips, in his own lips, in John 18, 36, where he says, his disciples will be fighting if this kingdom were of this world, this is this, this John saying, my servants will have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. This actually Jesus was saying this, coming from his lips, from John. He said, his kingdom, if this kingdom is of this world, 
my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jew. So the priest there strive to enter means entering to a battle. Right? If I may go back to uh, the physical, physical where I was talking about a while ago. Uh, there's what we call a, uh, the reality of warfare. Do you think uh, entering a battle is easy? Well, I guess I can test with that. <laughs> because uh, given my, uh, my military background, I was, I was involved in the, what we call the Desert Storm when I was during 1991. When the, bro when the war broke in uh, 1991, when, when Iraqi invaded Kuwait, if you remember, maybe some of you are still young at that time, uh, it was not easy. It wasn't a joke. I remember when, when my, uh, uh, my, our captain was speaking about when, when, when Bush declared war at that time, we were heading to, heading to the uh, uh, Indian Ocean to meet with the, you know, with the counterpart or the enemies at that time too. The purpose of that is our, our purpose is to invade or to actually to to uh, push away the Iraqis from Kuwait because they invaded Kuwait. So as we all know, uh, Kuwait is an ally of, of the US. So it's our job was to push them away and enter Kuwait and liberate the world duration. Uh, the captain uh, actually said that uh, and the speaker said, this, this is the time, this is not anymore a, 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 tray, a, a drill, it's for real. And I was there like, no, oh, I, because there's chemical and biological warfare during that time, uh, if you remember. And then, uh, and then our suit said, uh, when we're, ha we're having our briefing, he said, the closest land that you could actually go, because we're in the middle of the water, it's two miles. I said, oh, I could, I could probably survive with that two miles. You know, like we have this kind of you know, boat or something like that. If our boat will sink or our ship will sink. And he said, completely said, no, he said, two miles down. <coughs> that means we're dead. If you're not paying attention, if you're not paying detail, attention to details, if you're not doing what's supposed to be done. So let's let's see. In a war, I would call there's a road road to victory, right? There's a road to victory. That's our goal. It's the road to victory. Uh, of course, if you want to take that road to victory, you have to engage in a war. You can't just sit there and you know wait, and the uh, enemies will attack you, or you know. You have to actually to engage, you know, to accomplish the mission you need to engage, confront, face the opponents. You have to engage. Without that, you know, you just don't engage. You need some, you know, all the trainings that you, you've done during your, you know, your, your training, all the discipline, you know, attention to details, full battle gear, you know. You can't just go there, you know, with nothing, yeah. So all the trainers you have, you have, you have those, and for you to go to win. So when road to victory, your goal or your mission is to win the battle. But let me shift you back to what Jesus is saying about striving to enter through the narrow door. So we go back to our text. So our main goal is to enter through the narrow door. That's in verse 24. Entering means the kingdom of God. That's the actual message of that. You know. That's our goal, to enter the, you know, the kingdom of God. So in order to, to achieve the road to victory, we need to engage in the war. We need to apply all the trainings, all the gear that we have, we need. We need to stay focused on to win the goal. But you know what, there's also, unfortunately, there's also a, 
a uh, the negative side of it. If there's a road to victory, there's also a, a road to defeat. Yeah. When I say this, because uh, in a war, not everyone wins. You know that. Let's read in Matthew 7, 13 says, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only few will find it. And from the scripture, if you imagine a, uh, if you're far, far from from far far, you see two gates or two uh, two uh, two doors. One is narrow. One is kind of wide, and the road is like you know on the wide gate, you can see all the nice road maybe. So wide, so beautiful, you know, things like that. And then on the narrow side, narrow gate, or narrow door, door, you see, maybe it's not, maybe rough, or maybe crooked, or you know, rough road, something like that. So usually when you see that, being that, you see that, that uh, those doors, you always, you always go to the, uh, where you could actually make it easier for you to go, right? Plus it's just, it's a, it's a wide gate. It's just easy to come in. But on this passage, it says, you know, that, that, that narrow, oh, that wide gate that leads to destruction. But the narrow gate is, on the other side of it, is where the kingdom of God is. <coughs> now, on the text, there's a question that, that was asked to Jesus in the beginning of the verse. On the verse 23, he said, let me just read it again. Lord, will those who are saved be few? It's a question of you know, uh, and and how did how did the Lord Jesus said, uh, answer that question? Well, indirectly he said, you know, many will try, strive to enter the narrow gate. Many will seek, but will not be able to. So there's a difference of saying seek and striving. You know, seek sometimes people like they just oh they seek, you know. They come to church, they always hear the same message. Come to church, they see, hear the same message. Maybe they say like they're seeking, they're searching, but they're not actually striving, you know? There's no one striving there, you know? I'm not gonna mention, I mean, like people like that, they come to, I, mean, I guess, I hope they're not in this church. Some churches that they, you know, they come to. Once they did their part attending the church, or, you know, did their part in seven, seven days, for that one and a half hours of Sunday, maybe, or Saturday, then that's it. They're done there, you know. I guess they're done there searching. They're seeking, but they're not, they're not striving. Even, let's continue on verse 25, it says, once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, you will stand outside knocking and pleading. Sir, open the door for us. But he will answer, I don't know you, where you came from. It says, not everyone who knocks on the door enters. Yeah, yeah, like giving you some warnings. You know? It's scary, but it's coming from the word of God. And they even say that uh, we ate and drank with you and taught us on the streets. But he will reply, I don't know you or where you came from. And then there's the other part of it in the verse 28 when it says there would be weeping there and gnashing of teeth. So you see Abraham, Isaac, Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God. But you are so strong now. People who come from east, west, north and south. This is a good thing of artists, you know, which explains the later. And will take their places at the feast in the kingdom of God. This is a revelation. Salvation is not actually for the Jews. Because I, I believe is one of the, the guy who, or the person who asked the question is a Jew or is a follower. But then he said, you know, they'll be coming from east to west, north to south. And these are the Gentiles. And I guess we are also part of that. We are, you know, we have that the privilege of that salvation. 
What a revolution. Praise God. But again, not everyone wins every sinner's, not everyone wins every sinner's loses. Just because we, uh, we engage in spiritual activities doesn't mean you win. If you are also engaging in wickedness, we lose. Plain and simple. There's some questions I need to ask you, church. You know what, I, I actually grew in, in I call a, a Christian denomination church from when I was young to I grew up. But then, uh, I would say I consider myself like me. But you know, the Lord revealed me something. It's not just being a member of a church or being a member of a church to guarantee you, you know, to enter the kingdom of God. There's something more personal to it. I grew up in a church, Protestant church. Well, I know they teach about, you know, salvation, but I never pay attention to it, actually. All I know is that when, I, when I'm a member of the church for since I was kinder until I reached, you know, the age of, you know, uh, maybe high school, the revelation never, you know, until, until the time when something that personal has to be taken place, personal relationship with the Lord. So I almost followed that track. I have some questions I need to ask. Uh, it's not a an application. Maybe questions that I on this topic, are we, are we living like soldiers in the battle? Or are we not serious about our salvation? Or are we saying that uh, we are in the battle but we don't do our best? Or are we losing the battle? It's a lot of questions that we need to ask ourselves. Are we sure we're not just going to church but doesn't really have a saving relationship with Christ? You know what, that's very important. Like when I said, you know, I'm growing in the church, I, I thought that was. But, you know, the Lord spoke to me in my revelation of the Word of God. So the question is this. What does Jesus want us to strive against so that we can enter through the narrow door? You know what, there is some, there are, it's not, like what I said, it's not easy. Entering a battle, entering into this what we call the narrow gate, or we're entering the kingdom of God, there will be some obstacles in our lives. Yeah. Said so this life is a war. So who's the enemy? Of course, we have enemies. I didn't say you know. It doesn't mean that we we make war with with people. No, I'm not talking about that. But to sin, I'll be more specific, our own sin. Our own sin that keeps us from entering the kingdom, not anyone else. Yes, maybe there are sins out of others that can hurt us or kill us, right? But that doesn't stop us from entering the kingdom of God. Temptations, Woo. sin comes from a variety of sources. So the temptations. I'm going to read 1 John 2.16 with you. And I know you're familiar with this. It says, it sum up with all of this. It says, for all, the, for all that is in the world. This is in 1 John 2.16. If you want to open that. In your, it says, for all that is in the world. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the eyes. And the pride of life is not of the Father. But it's of the world. Let me repeat that. For all that is in the world. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of the world. Now, if, if we digest those three different, those three things that were mentioned in this, in this book, John says, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. The lust of the flesh, I would say the pleasures of life, okay? The physical indulgence. If you remember the parable of the sower or the parable of the four soils, that's in Matthew, Matthew 13. 
It says there, there's a part there where, where they mentioned about the, some of the uh, seeds that uh, were spread or sprout in, in the thorny grounds, right? Uh, they actually sprout and then they, they die. They die you know. <laughs> it represents those who actually uh, heard the word, but then they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life. So these are the ones. These are some of the things that you know we be, we watchful for, you know, because we enjoy enjoy the blessings of life. You know, getting too comfortable, too occupied of uh, making money or living. True. These are the choke, cares of riches and pleasures of life. Everything is all good. I don't need, I don't need a God for now, maybe later, because I'm, you know, doing good. It says Luke 21, 34, but watch yourself. The physical indulgence. What are these, like, the drugs? You tend to be slain with this, you know, and when you start to having these pressures of life, uh, you come to a point that you know you, you, you're not enjoying it anymore and then you, you tend to get more something, you know, out of it. Even food sometimes, you know, become a a, a, a stumbling block of, of, of us being, getting too much involved with this, you know, being slave with this. He says, but watch yourselves and let your heart be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of life. And that day comes upon you and suddenly a trap. Beware. There's also what we call the, uh, the, pain, the pain parts of life. These are the, uh, the, rock, the, the seeds that sprout in the, in, the, in the rocky ground. Right? And then they actually sprout and then they, actually, they die again. Because why? Because... When the when tribulations, persecutions arises, they fall. When there's pain, there's sickness, losing someone sometimes is part of it. Getting persecuted, castaway specific like losing jobs, properties, losing them. Sometimes losing old friends when you, you know, of course, it's not, you know, just to name a few. Trials. Our trials, but surprisingly, uh, remind us we have to be more vigilant in in the pressures in the, in the pressures of life than pain, <coughs> because in the tendency uh, when we are enjoying something, you know, uh, pleasure seldom awaken people to their need of God, right? But pain does sometimes. Uh, it's funny when we say like we always uh, when when we we make God as our last assert when when we're on the pain almost like about to to give up or you know that's when we call God so let's be more vigilant like we said you know be more aware of the pleasures of life this will actually lure us from from winning the battle <coughs> the last of the ice one thing I can remember, I can only mention here, is, uh, what's it, money? Ooh. Well, I'm not saying that, you know, money is not good. Someone spoke here about that, you know. Money is good. We need money, right? I mean, we need to put food on the table. The necessities of life, you know, we have to buy this, or, you know, for our family, for, you know, for our convenience, but, you know, but if we start to focus ourselves on that word money and putting God aside, then it becomes bad. The love of money. That's what it says. It says Mark 10, 25 says, it's easier for a camel to go through a needle than a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. It's kind of like a 
if you imagine a, a uh, not specifically or literally, say a, a camel, it's easier for a camel to go through a needle than to, uh, to reach man to enter the kingdom of God. It's actually saying something about, you know, in Jerusalem, uh, uh, in order for a camel to get into the gate, it's, it's something like, look like, a, like a needle. In order for him to, uh, to get in, inside Jerusalem or inside the gate, he has to get off all the, the stuff that's behind or on top of, of the camel. So those are the riches. It says, you know, it's a uh, symbolical, what the Lord was giving example, like, you know, entering to a... Uh, so those are the riches that, you know, that we don't need. Matthew 6, 19 says, Do not lay up yourselves treasures on earth. Matthew 6, 24, you said, You can serve God and money. Plain and simple. Matthew 6, 21, Where your treasure is, there where your heart will be also. Luke 20, so Luke 6, 20 says, Blessed are the poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Material possessions is another thing. You know, that's self-explanatory. Too much possession and becoming more involved with that. Uh, Pride of life is one of them, the last one. Pride. Practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen. It's like showing off. Or the pride that you are. I am someone. I'm somebody. I'm good. Well, feeling good. Uh, when we feel good when someone speaks about someone, about you. You know, like, it may not be wrong, right? It's, it's not wrong. But it's dangerous if you don't watch. We have to be vigilant. If you remember the Garden of Gethsemane, when uh, Jesus was, was kind of praying, Garden of Gethsemane, then he left his disciples. I think James, uh, Peter. They were there, he left them in there and said, you know, watch, watch and pray, don't sleep. So he went there to pray, came back, and he saw them sleeping, right? He said, what are you doing, you know? I told you to watch and pray. And then he prayed again, he went back to the garden, came back, See what happened? He stole them again sleeping. It's the second time. He said, he said it again, you know, I should pray. And Jesus came back into the garden and prayed. This is the third time. And he came back. He never learned. Same thing. They were sleeping. It's a reminder for us to watch and pray. Even Noah's time, if you remember, when the big flood came in, they were not paying, they're not paying attention, they were not. Life is normal. Doing this, doing that. God came, they all got killed. Well, what, why why am, I, am I sharing this to you guys? Why am I... You know what's the good thing about this is like when 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 you do a message like this, it always starts with you. God always speaks to you first. I don't know why I picked this this passage, but I know it applies to my life. When I I want to share to you my experience. Like as you all know, I was in the military. Back in the Philippines, if you are a, a, a serviceman or what we call a U.S. military, you are somebody. In my town, there's only a few military, U.S. military in there. And I, I understand all of those people that I know at my age at that time, they're trying to, to take the test, to take all the, you know, the interviews and physical, you know, and nobody, it's like few out of a thousand, you can make it. Once you make it, and since you you have that kind of a pride that you really, you know I yes I'm good yes, you know I'm one of the I don't know the few that I made it 
You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian. And I'm a Christian for so many, many years. It's, it's not that I, I want to brag about it. It's not something that I be proud of it for so many years in my Christian life because I know I failed many times. Losing the battle. When I had that career in my life, I got stationed in the Philippines. There I was thinking like, why am I, you know, when I went there, I'm like, when I go home to my town, they see me with my car. Even the police, when they said, do not park here, this is gonna let me park there. <laughs> Things like that, that you know, and then I, I start to build up all this, you know, this something, oh, hey, I'm special here, I'm something, I'm somebody. When they see me, my friends that I see me, oh, man, there's the military guy in the car, you know, and things like that. And I, you know what, I, I enjoy hearing those kind of, uh, you know, praise. I start to make good money, dollars, you know, converted to peso. That's a lot of difference, you know, making money, starting building my career. I said, Lord, this is it. But little did I know that I was not, I'm already moving away where I'm supposed to be. I never pay attention. I start enjoying. It's life. I was blessed, actually. I know I have to use the word blessed when I say, you know, I'm blessed. But actually, I was, I was not doing the right thing. I was lured with this money. I was lured with this pride, with this lust. To be more specific, I, like I'm enjoying, you know, going out parties, you know. At the end of the day, at the end of the night, when I go back to my ship, to my barracks, my cube, mm -hmm. there is always a question of guilt. But I didn't pay attention. I'm doing good. Say, yeah. <laughs> One day, I got back here. I would say my family, I'm, I'm doing good with my, with my family then. I was just, it's okay. Nothing really much something I need to be bothered about. I went back here playing basketball. This is when the Lord actually taught me very well. Simple basketball for my ligaments. So not basketball but I tore my ligaments and then the end part of it is I I was discharged in the military because I'm not able to, to be healthy to serve. So I got out. It was a pain. It was a pain. There goes my career. Lost my job, of course. Stayed home. Maybe see her. Um, but then it never stopped there. Actually, I, I didn't actually come back right away with the Lord. I became rebellious. I said, Lord, I thought you got me this. You got me this already. But no. Imagine 1991, 92. I got out in 95, 96. So many years I did not enjoy. There was no peace. Although I know I have to go back, but I never go back. But you know something about when the Lord uh, gave you a chance to uh, to recover. You know, he He never gave up on me. You know, I never gave up. Although I've been doing a lot. I go to church, yeah, Sunday. I get back to my normal routine, going back to church. But then, like a flash. Some other church when I went to, I the moment the, as soon as the church is over, we're gone. I guess even here when I started joining, 
coming here, actually when I, I I'm, not, I'm not trying to brag, but this church, I want to boast for Jesus. Maybe God uses this church to bring it back. Imagine that like five years ago, I just started going back to the Lord. Years before that, I was got so patient with me. You know that? Now, I'm not saying, for you young people right here, I'm not saying that you, you will follow what I, you know, I'm not sharing this to you to, just to follow because anyway, the Lord will lead you back again anyway. No, you might have a different journey in your faith. Don't let that happen to you because it's not good. There is nothing. It's no joy. Christina, there is more. You know what? I am a miracle. God made me a miracle. Uh, I translate. I translate that because I want. I want to sing a song. <laughs> I want to sing a song for for the Lord, and and I want to share this with you. I'm not a good singer. Okay, I'm just. Uh, I just love to sing, <laughs> and I, I, I'm. I'm gonna try to put it on the on the screen. That way, you don't have to look at me. <laughs> You can look at the lyrics of the, song, of the song, and I'm sure you will be blessed. I asked uh, uh, some of the praise and worship team to help me out. That way, in case I, uh, I don't have to sing a cappella. <laughs> the, uh, the title of the song is this, I'm a Miracle Lord. Maybe some of you did not hear this. I mean, they were not born yet when this song was, was you know, for those people, or young people out there. Maybe some of you know it's already. But I want to sing the song. Where is it? Look at the lyrics. Do we have the lyrics? <laughs> there are times. Yeah. When I wonder what you see in me Lord, I know I'm an old and I could hope to be But when you reach your hand That you must
bring you. You know what? Let's do this. Do you guys believe in miracles? Yes. yes. Don't have to raise your hands. <laughs> Let's do some miracles. You know, God is going to miracles here. Why don't we close our eyes? I want to close your eyes. You can join us. Close your eyes. If you can, maybe you can hold your hands with someone or you don't have to. But I want you to close your eyes and think. Meditate. Just for a few seconds. Now I want you to open your eyes. You know what? Tell your next person beside you. Said you are a miracle. You are a miracle. You are a miracle. That's true. Because you came here, you know what? The moment you wake up in the morning, that's a miracle. The moment you, uh, uh, like what I said, came here, you came here with, you know, with a purpose. You came here with a purpose. You came here not by accident. Lord has a plan for you. In order for you to do that, you have to have a someone commander in chief in your life. That's a start. I want to ask, I know you always hear this every day, I mean every church. You know, when you invite people to, to receive the Lord. I know we always ask you this question. We always invite you, but this, this is the time the Lord is speaking to you. In order for you to win the battle, you have to have that kind of relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's a victory. That's a guaranteed victory. Mrs. MacArthur says there's no substitute for victory. That's going to be our, our motive. I want to lead you in prayer. If salvation, if, if anybody here, you know, felt that you know you, you need something, that you need something in your life to start with. It's not, it's not because you're still young or, or you're old. You know, it's too late or it's too early. Don't say that. Close our eyes and uh, if, I know some of you here already have a relationship with the Lord. I want to encourage you to help, you know, follow me and to say, say these words. To encourage people who are, haven't accepted the Lord yet in their lives. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I know that I have sinned and have separated from you. I am truly sorry. And I want to turn away from my past sinful life towards you. Forgive me, Lord. I believe that your son, Jesus Christ, died for my sins, was resurrected from the dead, is alive. And here's my prayer. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life to rule and reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.